Hello, kings and queens. You're listening to Affirmations of Excellence, an offering of personal devotions to fuel your week. I am your guide, Ariel Ellis, and I'm so excited to create a space of encouragement and inspiration for each of you. The person who lives a life of excellence is one who is willing to do and to dare. As living souls made in God's image, we are not called to mediocrity. We are called to excellence. Excellence is the result of a prosperous, well-lived, and fulfilled life. And this podcast is for those who sense a royal calling on your life, those who are learning to hear God's voice and clarity and need motivation for the assignment, and who want to live out His calling with excellence. Each week, we'll explore themes of everyday life and talk through ways to escape mediocrity and find true fulfillment. We're in episode five, and I want to thank you for coming along this journey to excellence with me. To be honest with you, this podcast was a ministry that was never on my agenda. I was in preparation to start writing my second book, something that also was not on my agenda either at all. But it's so funny how God will reveal things to you when you listen closely. In the middle of the biggest project of my academic career, I got a clear revelation to write a book about excellence. So in order to center my heart and quiet my mind, I took myself on a solo trip to Belize at the end of 2018 to start the beginning of 2019. I brought in the new year at a small, intimate jungle resort in Central America under the breeze and the palm trees. While many were partying and praising and perhaps sleeping in the new year, I was prayerfully writing a chapter outline for a new book and planning 52 episodes for a weekly podcast that would accompany the book that God had placed on my heart. Yes, I planned all 52 episodes of this podcast in less than a day. And of course, I revise and review on a weekly basis, but each episode of this podcast has been carefully and thoughtfully offered to God for divine guidance long before I ever recorded one word. So just know this is not a show or a gimmick or branding tactic. This is indeed ministry. Please continue to stay on this journey to excellence with me. There's so much more that we will experience together and affirm in excellence. And as your guide, I want to be a resource. So please reach out to me, send me questions, topics, and feedback via social media, and go to anchor.fm to send me a voice message about the podcast. The authenticity we will experience together is my attempt at pursuing excellence and righteousness, righteousness in my convictions and my commitments, and righteousness is what we will dive into with this week's episode. Kings and Queens, be sure to share, rate, and subscribe as you listen today. In a study by Scientific American, researchers suggested that many humans only use about 10% of their potential. This means that the majority of us on a daily basis in every moment of our lives are functioning with 10% of the capacity God has put on the inside of us. I have enjoyed a full life. I'm still fairly young, but the wealth of my experiences are probably worth two lifetimes for someone my age. Not only do I have a story, I have a testimony, or one, or two, or three, perhaps countless expressions of how I see God calling me to excellence in all areas of life, rescuing me from self-destruction, delivering me from cycles of pain, challenging my ideas of success, revealing His will and supernatural power, and I can go on and on. I have a lot to be thankful for, and I'm sure you do too. But I can't help but wonder in my daily living and activities if I'm actually operating at my highest capacity. I mean, sometimes I feel like I am, but sometimes I feel like I'm only scratching the surface. I'm not easily impressed by anything or anyone. I remember as a kid, if there was a magic show or fireworks or something that other kids would wow and ooh and ah over, it never impressed me or excited me. I just figured, yeah, that's how magic tricks work. They're supposed to be magical. So what? Or 
Sure, fireworks are loud and colorful and they light up the sky and then it's over. That's why they're called fireworks. What's the big deal? And don't get me wrong, there are things that did excite me growing up and still do even now today, but I've never been easy to impress. I've always expected excellence to be the standard for everything and everyone, and most importantly for me. So that means I'm pretty hard on myself. No matter what's on the resume or how well I exceed in an area, no matter who claps or congratulates, no matter how many likes I get, I haven't done anything special. Whatever was done or accomplished was just simply me meeting the standard. If we apply that to the concept of righteousness, we might discover a similar approach. There's a constant awareness of falling short between excellence and mediocrity. When it comes to God, that excellence is seen as righteousness. It has very little to do with getting things done and achieving worldly success and everything to do with practicing humility and pursuing spiritual obedience. I stressed a few episodes back that excellence does not equal perfection and neither does the concept of righteousness. I cannot overemphasize that enough. God is merciful and does not expect perfection. But he does want you to be your best because being your best is what brings him glory. It does not glorify God when we just go through the motions and settle for less. It does not glorify him when we ignore his commands and settle for mediocrity. When we settle for mediocre living, we limit God's bigness. Our boldness says we believe God possesses all capability even in our desire to be righteous. God will be to us what we expect him to be. He is not mediocre, but if we think he is, that is exactly what we will experience with him. I know that righteousness sounds like one of those big church words from the Bible that people throw around. So let's frame it up in real life terms. Righteousness for us means pursuing the character of God. It simply means one who is right. It is the only standard that is acceptable to him. It has less to do with your behavior and more to do with your heart. It has less to do with being better than others and more to do with being better to others. When I feel I should do the right thing and I do it because the right thing is what would meet God's standard, that's called righteousness. When I make a point of living my life to a standard that is fair, honest, and pure because it will glorify God, that's called righteousness. When I change my negative attitude or approach towards something or someone because I desire a clean heart, that's called righteousness. When I submit and suspend my own selfish desires while I could have held on to being arrogant and stubborn, that's called righteousness. When I practice living a life day in, day out that God would be pleased with, that's called righteousness. Righteousness means my heart, And my actions are aligned in the way that God has instructed me to live my life. And when I deviate from that, I am convicted to immediately return to what I know is right and best. Excellence should appear in every facet of life. Righteousness is the evidence of excellence. The truth should encourage you to level up and focus on pursuing excellence because how you do anything is how you do everything. John 1 verses 1 through 3 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. That means that every standard of excellence comes from God. He is the only one who can set the standard, and not even you can do that for your own life. The more we commit our ways to God and trust in him, the more growth he'll give us in righteousness, which leads to more trust in God. In the Old Testament, Lot was a righteous man instructed to leave the sinful land of Sodom and Gomorrah and not to look back. The angels rescued Lot and his family. As they fled, the angels warned them not to look back at the city. It was not appropriate for them to stare at the sin and the suffering of others. As he escaped with his family, Lot's wife turned to look back and became a pillar of salt, a manifested reflection of her heart. God actually turned her body into a pile of salt. 
Now, he won't do that to you in today's time, but he will convict you. See, Lot's wife was stuck in a place of her disobedience, and she did not trust the new standard God was calling her and her family to. She wasn't wholeheartedly convinced that obeying God was the right thing to do, so she held on to her past instead. When you focus on the past, your heart becomes stunted at the place of your offense. Ask God to reveal to you what is already yours and the standard that he has set. You don't always have to look back. When you ignore righteousness, your destiny becomes stuck at the point of your disobedience. I don't want what God has for me to be held up and delayed or sadly never reached because of my inability to let go and pursue righteousness. If righteousness means I obey God, let go of a false standard, relinquish my past, admit when I'm wrong, and in exchange, I get to walk in freedom and deliverance and prosperity, then righteousness must be the best option for me. Kings and queens, what does righteousness really look like for us today? Do we understand righteousness as a gift or just a bargain? Are we open to a different set of standards? What about you? When was the last time you looked at the standard? How comfortable are you taking a thoughtful, revealing look at God's standard for your life? Take a second to think about it. One thing about how excellence is apparent in our righteousness that I have to mention is our human nature to error and make mistakes. An important element in the process of changing our hearts and leaning toward righteousness is knowing when to acknowledge wrongdoing. Mistakes can make us miserable. The wrong things can even sometimes cost us our lives. When we make the wrong choices, we have to consider if we've consulted with God so that we can make a righteous decision to begin with. Sometimes we complain about deliverance being delayed and not coming quick enough. We get angry with God and discontent with his process. We punish him for making us hurt. He gives us free will, so he will never overrule our choices. This means that when we ask and consult him before we choose and make decisions, no matter how big or small the matter, we are attempting righteousness because we want God to not only endorse our choices, we want him to be honored by them and we want them to be a reflection that others see in the results of our choices and in the way we correct our mistakes. We're not greater than our choices, but we are certainly greater than the mistakes we make. Our choices reflect what we value. Conditions can be temporary. Lasting decisions should not be made on temporary circumstances. So when we are pursuing the right things, we're leaving mediocrity behind and going after excellence with full force. Romans 12, 22 says, Do not be conformed by the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Convictions require severance at some point. You cannot hold on to something while holding on to that which contradicts it. For instance, in our friendships, it can be hard to maintain a friendship with someone who is a thief if you don't steal. The righteousness of God in your life will pull you further and further away from that person, and it even will convict you to encourage them to stop stealing and live a more honest life. And I think it's fair to say that about anything in our lives that we are attracted and attached to or are interested in. If you aren't willing to listen to everything God has to say, you eventually won't hear anything he has to say. If you want to hear his comforting voice, such as the acknowledgement of blessings like protection and provision, you have to listen to his convicting voice as the acknowledgement of when something is right or wrong, then choosing to pursue what is right. Righteousness convicts us to get away from the stagnant places because it requires a change of heart. When you change your heart, you change your life. Put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your mind, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness. Ephesians 4 verses 22 through 24. If you want to have lasting change in your life, you must start with a change of your heart. The mind and the body will follow, and that includes 
changing the way you think so that you honor God through the things that you think and the things that you let into your mind. That's true spiritually, emotionally, and mentally. You've got to take off the old before you can put on the new. You have to stop putting negative, hurtful things into your life and start watching and listening to things that edify God and make you more like Him. In the renewing of your mind, you've got to put off before you can put on. I can't imagine that most of us are actually walking around with 90% of our potential untapped and unmet. If that's true, I am convicted to be better and to do better. When we live life with excellence, we hold the great privilege of glorifying God and proclaiming His excellence to the world around us. As God has given us and served us with only His very best, who are we to withhold our best from Him? If we truly understand His grace, we will respond in giving excellence to Him and to others. Righteousness means to stand in His presence without guilt, shame, inferiority, or condemnation. When God thinks of you, He thinks of you as a victorious, conquering, strong, powerful, wise, and holy son or daughter, and in your power, position, and presence as a king or a queen. He sees you as a mighty champion. He sees you as the head and not the tail. God may give you an uncommon approach in your understanding of your position. Mediocrity may need to be declared away, which is why our affirmations are so powerful. We have the ability to ask and praise God for better than go after righteousness and actually be it. When you are always conscious of what's wrong, you will do what is wrong. But when you are always conscious of being the righteousness of God, you will do what is right. You will act on the outside how you see yourself on the inside. Your thoughts will dwell on what is right rather than what is wrong. Search through the scriptures regarding who you are, what is already yours, and what you can do. And let this new way of thinking flood your heart and mind. Kings and queens, God sets the standard. His standard applies to all areas of our lives. We often make up rules and rituals that set the standards for our lives without referring to God's word as the foundation for living. He has already established patterns for us to follow and imitate. It's up to us to decide that we will. Now that we've discovered how excellence is a result of righteousness, let's pursue these affirmations for the week. Say this with me. I am the righteousness of God. I stand in the presence of God without guilt, shame, inferiority, or condemnation. My standard is God's Word. I am awake to righteousness and believe it will lead me to a pure heart. I will not think of myself as anything less or more than what God thinks of me. I have the power to pursue a righteous life. Kings and queens, may you be fully equipped to master excellence in the world this week. Go be excellent and don't forget your crowns.